Recording in progress. All right, make <laughs> sure you prove that. Let me fix my volume. All right. All right, so you're intrigued. You want to know how to build a better cheeseburger and what that has to do with real estate. All right. So I'm going to ask you guys, this is a come off a mute day. What are the great makings? And if you're a vegan, there are options. If you're a vegetarian, there are options. There are things that you can put between buns and veggies and other things to make a wonderful sandwich. So I'm going to ask you guys, in your world, what are the great makings? What makes a great cheeseburger? Starts with, starts with good beef. Good beef. Absolutely. <laughs> Wagyu's great. <laughs> Cheese makes me happy. Cheese it makes the world go round. Yes. It's got to have a good bun, too. Great. A nice brioche. Right. <laughs> pretzel roll. Pretzel rolls got huge go. in the last few years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like my avocado. Oh, avocado. Real pineapple. Oh, oh, nice. oh that is see? my son's Ooh. favorite burger. Teriyaki pineapple burger from Red Robin. He could live off that thing. Cool. What else? Bacon every time. Bacon. And it's got to be the good crispy bacon, not the bacon where you bite it and it yeah. pulls the whole thing out and then you're trying to stick it like a pig, right? And right. he when that happens. Yeah. What else makes a great burger? A French sauce. Nice friend. <laughs> A little hot sauce mayo, a little aioli you make. Being cooked over an open flame. Although I am a fan <laughs> the of the flat, the flat top. Like oh, a yeah, yeah. diner yeah. burger. Yep. Smash it into the grill. Smash burgers. Those are my newest obsession on my Blackstone. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What else makes a great burger? How about when you don't have to make it? Why does it uh, taste better when somebody else number. makes it? Oh. It's so true, right? Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've got all these ingredients. Now, my mom is boring. She's like, I just want a little overcooked beef on a little bun, and I want it squishy. Like, she's, that's Doris for you. So now my next question to you guys, where is the most memorable place you ate the burger that you will always remember? What place was this? Camping. At camping. My camping. first meet with my husband at Bidwell. <laughs> See, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> Where was the most memorable burger or sandwich you've ever had? Maybe Red Robin. Has anybody had one at the Capitol Grill? You'll never eat a burger elsewhere. I'm just going to tell you. What about the most memorable be meal? So if you can't think about the most memorable burger, cheeseburger, or sandwich, where was the most memorable meal? The meal that you put every other plate against and that you crave and you're like, I just wish I could eat this all the time. What meal is that? Apparently you haven't seen the size of my butt because too many <laughs> too many things fit in that category for me. I'm just going to bow out of that one. <laughs> all the foods. <laughs> We're all friends here, right? Too much information. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's a La, La Scala uh, Italian restaurant in North Massachusetts. Now, why? Um, it's uh, it's all in the ingredients. It's it's it wasn't about it wasn't about the uh, the venue. It was all about the food. So it was the quality of the food you were being delivered. Absolutely, absolutely the 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 quality, the uniqueness. Um, the, the portion, which was, um, was just right, was not, you know, wasn't this huge portion, wasn't, um, some, yeah, it was, it was that, but it was primarily the, the taste. It was, uh, it was the experience. The whole experience. So you felt valued when you were there getting this delicious meal. I've been there. I've been back there for, can't tell you how many years. So you're a repeat business person because of how oh, much value this restaurant oh, provides. Oh, of course. So you see where I'm see getting what you at. did there. You see where I'm getting at, guys. And like you're leader. probably telling other people about this burger, too. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so we're building a better cheeseburger or a meal experience. 
And now today's class is all about how are we gonna take those cheeseburger experiences? I'm a food motivated animal, so that's why our classes are usually around food. And how can we get that experience into the real estate transaction and beyond. Because how many of you would never have to worry about buying a lead? Or where your next sale is gonna come from? Or does the phrase cold call make you kind of vomit? Oh, well, Ajna, right? How would you love it if we never had to do those things? Well, well you can. can. And it all comes back to value and building a better cheeseburger. And your cheeseburger is your database. So everything we're going to do after today, you guys, your data bank is going to be so happy, so juicy, all these ingredients. And when you open someone's client contact, you're gonna know exactly the value you need to provide and build them a real estate experience where they are never gonna stop talking about you, the emotional proximity to you, and how much value you bring. Because as a new agent, you may not have sales to back up and put on your listing or buyer's presentations. But what you do have the ability to do is provide the same experience from client to client, that Disney experience, that Amazon experience, that best cheeseburger of your life, go back to that restaurant and dream about that cheeseburger experience. And we're gonna do that a few different ways. So now I'm gonna pop in a couple things into the chat. I'm gonna give you guys access to the memory jogger we went over on Monday on the growth call. This is one of my favorite tools because maybe as a newer agent, you're saying, I don't have a big database and that's okay because it's not, while the size of your database is in relation to your business, it's not just the size, it's the quality of your database. Yeah. How many of you have started putting vendors into your database? more I want to see more hands after today so if you don't know what to do today when you leave my call I want you to go find the next person that you in your go through your phone who is the last person I did business with personally and get them in and start a conversation so today the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start looking at who you already know to help you build a better cheeseburger database experience for you we don't have info about people. We don't know how to bring value to them. What we do know is that everybody wants to be treated as an individual, right? You don't call the grocery store and say, hello, grocery store. You say, hello, grocery store. I left my debit card there. That is not a true story in my world, right? Like <laughs> you, you speak to people, not businesses. Same thing. When you call the plumber, you're not saying, hello, plumber. You're saying, hey, Ray, how are you? I have a client or I need help or this and that, right? You speak to the people, not the businesses. So one of the easiest ways to build your database and start doing B2B and so that's business to business and start building relationships is putting the people you do business with every day into your data bank. And we're gonna do that with the memory jogger. Oh, so here, I'm sorry, my green screen's cutting me out. So this memory jogger is bank because it's gonna provide you with a welcome home packet for all your buyers and let me explain that when you start putting vendors into your database and tagging them appropriately with all their info you're building your vendor database because you're going to tag them vendor and then you're going to choose a tag of what they are dentist doctor dermatologist accountant cobbler i mean where do you find a cobbler that's like gold like i buy expensive shoes I'm gonna repair them so that I don't have to buy more expensive shoes. And then my husband's not mad at me. Who cleans the windows? Who services ACs? Who services irrigation systems? So as I'm going through this memory jogger, pick five a day, put them in your database, soup to nuts, but I want you to take it one step further. I want you to contact them. I want you to contact them and say, I am building a welcome home package for all the clients I help find homes in these neighborhoods. I would love to include your information. 
I would like you to either provide me a welcome letter. Would you like to provide them maybe a discount coupon to use your services or your product? I know I value using you. I really think my clients should the same. So now you gather all this info and guess what guys, you can export data out of command by sorting. So you can sort by vendor, boom, there's your vendor list. And make sure you grade your vendors too. If your clients start to have poor experiences, I'll never give a bad recommendation. I'll just recommend someone else. So I like to put A through F on things and then grade it. Cause I'm not gonna give somebody an F vendor, but I'm certainly gonna give them an A or a B one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thank them after our conversations with a thank you card, a handwritten thank you card. I'm gonna start making sure I tag them on my social media when they give me something for my clients, right? No other business is gonna say no to free marketing with you. Does that make sense, guys? And, it, and it's wonderful, because guess what? If you're already using these services with these people, you know and love them. And if you're using their services and you don't know and love them, reach out to me for a referral to someone else. We'll find you someone, okay? We'll find you someone. But there's a lot of people on this memory jog that are gonna, you're gonna be like, I never thought of putting that person in my data bank. But here's the other thing that's gonna happen from it. As you are starting to send more people to them, the rule of reciprocity, they're gonna wanna give back. And they're gonna start giving back to you. And not only will you get referrals from them, you might also be the one to help their employees you may be their preferred person for all things real estate, or you may create other relationships and to be at networking events with them. Maybe you sponsor things, maybe they sponsor things for you. It's also a great way with, with restaurants to make relationships for your client events. All kinds of fun things to do. So that's one way we are gonna start building a better cheeseburger is by adding that layer of vendors that may not be in your database today. Uh, if you don't know someone, maybe you're newer to the area, maybe you've never had to use an electrician or an irrigation specialist. People love to tell you who they know. This is also why I love making sure that in my client contacts, I have their profession and where they work. Because if I don't have someone that does irrigation, but I know that I've been putting what they do for work in, I'm gonna sort my database by landscapers. And I'm gonna see who do I have for clients that are landscapers and start reaching out to say, do you do irrigation? Do you do stonework? Do you do this? I have a client looking for this. By adding that piece of information into command, we're making us look like superheroes and hyper local experts. The other thing you can do is take to the interwebs. Ask your Facebook community. And I always do it like this. Who do you know that I should know that does X, Y, Z? I have clients who are looking for a responsive plumber or whatever you are missing, plug in. So if you do this big sheet and you're missing all these blanks, ask your community, because your community is going to give you feedback they love it. And I'm also going to make sure that I take the people who give that to me and I'm going to put that in command that that person referred me to plumber or they referred me to this. And I'm going to make sure to pick up the phone and go, hey, Sandra, thank you so much for referring me to Allison. She was fantastic. I'm going to make sure I recommend her to all my clients. And so you just did a touch. And you didn't ask anybody to buy, sell, refer, or invest in real estate. Because what we are learning and what the statistics tell us is that oftentimes we vomit real estate. It's what we know, right? We have a lot of information and we are so excited to share what we know about real estate with you that we are bah, real estate, right? You get a real estate, you get a market update, you get a just sold. But what we're not doing is layering the value of that big juicy cheeseburger with all the things that our clients or future clients may need. So let me tell you, the first time I ever made someone mad was when we sent a just sold to people who had already bought two weeks before. 
They could not understand why my husband was sending him a marketing piece that said just sold because they had just bought. In their heads, they were like, do you not know that I just bought a house from you? Like, why am I getting this? This is, I don't care about this. And I told my husband that was gonna happen. He did not listen and he did it anyway because he was not segmenting his list. But those people, we hurt our relationship because they did not feel value. They weren't getting that this is the best experience in real estate I've ever had because we were not adding value outside of real estate at that time, right? So we did our clients a disservice by not giving them that cheeseburger that they were looking for. The other thing I want you guys to start doing, and your coaches may scream, but I want you to start time blocking to be on Facebook and social media. And it's easy to do if you do it systematically. So when you are doing your lead gen during the day, the other, the other way we're gonna start adding the aioli, the tomato, the avocados, the bacon and the pickles, is by watching and looking at what our friends are doing and our community is doing on social media because most people put everything out there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add the link. So you're gonna go to their social media page. You're gonna go to the top and you're gonna, you're gonna copy and paste that entire link into command. So that way you're not opening Facebook. Oh my God, look at all these squirrel videos. And then you go back and three hours have gone by. No, you're able to click right on the link from the, your client's profile. It opens Facebook. You do a quick scan to see what's going on in their life. Have they had any life events? Maybe their daughter got married. Maybe they have a new grandbaby. Reach out, pick up the phone, text, do something that shows you are tuned into what they are doing outside of real estate, right? That's what's gonna start to create those memorable experiences like Bob and I were talking about at his favorite restaurant that's going to keep them coming back even if it's not time to buy or sell right you've got to go to bob anytime i've ever had a problem in the house he knows exactly who i need to call to get it solved he knows everything there is to know about our community i have never felt like he is a cutco or a kirby vacuum salesman i matter to bob and they're going to come back and start referring because you have built a better cheeseburger for them by doing a few new habits in your database. So it starts with getting those contacts healthy and I'm gonna put those in again in the link. So we're gonna start with the memory jogger and start adding different people to our database. Because oftentimes, right, one of the rules of the database is you have to feed it. And a lot of the new agents say to me, Brookie, I don't know what to put in. And I'm gonna say to you, go back to the memory jogger. You do know how to put in people. When you start building these cheeseburger, these gorgeous juicy cheeseburger, can't live without this relationships with people, and you call them, they're gonna start referring you and giving you information on people who may be looking to buy, sell, invest in real estate. And you're gonna be able to ask for that referral because you have a value add relationship where it's not you constantly asking for the sale of something. And it shows just how much you care about your community. Community was the huge word that I took out of Mega Camp this year. It's building your community, building your cheeseburger, right? What are all the layers of a cheeseburger? All right, so we've got our our memory jogger. Now, if we don't know things about people and we're not paying attention to things, we're not gonna know how to value them. And in the links, I gave you guys the link to the healthy contact sheet, and this shows you how to get your contact score up. What are all the pieces that make up a healthy contact? And again, I love this because it's also building my vendor list without realizing it. So my husband, besides being in real estate, is also a paramedic. So now that he's in referral status, we had built, thank you, Sean, he's a pain in my butt. He's going to school to be a physician's assistant. But what we, are do, we did was we looked 
at um, trends in his database and we said, okay, where do we have the most amount of people? Okay, are they all at Tufts? Are they all at Brigham's, Leahy, Winchester? Okay, now where do we have the least people? And what we started to do was drop off pot buys at the stations or the clinics or the hospitals where we had the least footprint with people there. While we may have known a lot of people at those places, right, Sean? So we went in and started dropping off baskets of pre-wrapped goodies. Now guys, if you ever bring stuff to a fire station, police station, it has to be individually wrapped. It cannot be homemade. Um, they off, they'll take it, thank you, and then they have to throw it away because people try to poison my husband. Um, he does a good job poisoning himself with all the crap he eats that I don't make. But we started to get sales because we co-branded with a mortgage partner who happened to have a first responder program. So we were bringing a ton of value to our people, but we weren't asking. And then we started getting, want to know more about what's going on with EMS and home sales and how we can save you money during the process. Scan with the QR code. It brought it right to a Google form. I got a lead notification. And then my husband was able to call these people and get them into our database. And we knew a ton of info because that one form was specific to Brigham and Women's or Wilmington Fire or where they had to be. So we knew where they were coming from, what they enjoyed, snacks. We knew about their world. And we started layering all these things, right? And oftentimes people would say to me, well, Brooke, we're not a client of yours. Why do you keep calling us clients? We have never bought, sold, done anything with you. And, and I always said this to them, just because I haven't bought or sold a house for you doesn't mean I don't value our relationship. And I have such an amazing network. I know at some point you're going to need help locally. And that's what I'm here for. And that's what it means to be a client with me. I'm so gracious for all the things you've ever done for us in our community. I want to shower you with gratitude as well. So that's why you're in my client gra gratitude program, right? So I'm bringing value to them without asking them to buy or sell. But that's one of the ways we can start layering that cheeseburger to make things beefy, happy, and an experience where, oh my God, I never bought or sold with Brooke and her husband, but they treat me like gold. When I'm ready, I'm gonna use them. Or if I hear someone, I'm always gonna to refer to them because even though I've never bought or sold with them, they keep dropping value on me, value, value. You have to provide value before asking for business, right? Somebody said this to me once at one of the events, and I think it was our social media guy. If you were on our three-part social media class, he said, as realtors, do you run into networking events with your for sale sign screaming you're a realtor? Because then he followed up with most of your marketing is that's all it's doing. It's you screaming in red hot into a marketing room, bonking people with your for sale sign, letting them know you're a realtor. They know, trust me, they know. How you're gonna get the business is bringing value and creating experiences that they want their friends to experience as well. Does that make sense? So your database needs to become a big juicy cheeseburger and your business needs to be the restaurant that houses that and those people, they come back for more and more and more because whether you give them a vegan burger, a clam burger, a beef burger, a chicken burger, turkey burger, it's the best burger they've ever had and it's the way they want it because no two people like their cheeseburgers alike. I would like extra dill pickles all the time, by the way. So how does your person, how do the people in your community want to be touched? And what, what needs to be in their cheeseburger so they come back to you, even if they've never bought a cheeseburger from you? So that's the big question for today, guys. To whom and when do you give this vendor package? Are you talking about my welcome home packet? Okay, so there's a couple of ways I do that. So when my husband closes with a buyer, we have a few things we had. We have a large magnet and it had um, lines on it. And there was a couple of pre-done fields and one would say non-emergent um, police, non-emergent fire, 
town hall slash city hall, um, urgent care, and then the rest were blank. And I would take a Sharpie and write the name and phone number of our favorite places depending on that locale. Then I would add a few more. Pizza, if it was somebody who I knew needed a salon or a barber, I would put that information down, Chinese food. I mean, you name it, if it was somebody who said, all right, where do I go for a laundromat or um, dry cleaner, my favorite dry cleaner. Then because I had cultivated relationships with all these people, those were the people I put in that welcome home packet and I gave that to them with the magnet. So it had things like discounts I had requested that were better than what you would just get on the pizza menu or on their website. Free things, you know, gym memberships, the, your first month free. Um, does anybody remember the welcome wagon? That's how old I am as I was a welcome wagon kid. Like my mom was one of the volunteers that went around to the neighborhood and did those things. So when you moved into a neighborhood, for those of you who are like, born in the 90s and the 00s people would come to your house with like a gift and it was usually like the library or rotary or kiwanis and it was a huge gift but it was menus because back then we didn't have the interwebs and it was all the places you should go it was community events where to find that info it was a magnet from the police and all these things right and it was all stuff to get you acclimated to the community so when we moved a couple years ago in Wilmington, the library did that. So I got this giant package one day from the library that said, welcome to town. And I was like, I'm from town. Like I just moved in town, but this was a newer thing. And I was like, this is amazing. We need to do this in our business, but in a scalable, affordable way. How do we do that? We tap into our community because they want those connections of anybody moving in just as much as you and I want to move those people in and out. So I, that is a welcome home packet. Then we have a closed community. We have a closed Facebook community that is our, like what you see on public Facebook for the business pages is not reflective of what's in our community. We invite people into our closed Facebook group so that I can monitor, and my husband can monitor who's posting about real estate or who's trying to sell to our people because that's the last thing I want is a bunch of other realtors get my people. But what we do is we talk about things that are going on locally. We talk about vendors who are giving discounts to my clients. Maybe it's leaf cleanup, fall cleanup, you know, irrigation. Because remember guys, it's that time of year where your first time home buyers, if they have sprinkler systems or irrigation systems, they may not know what to do. Reach out to them. They're scared. They may not know that you have to put covers or winterize their outdoor faucets. What to do with the pools? this is where your cheeseburger comes in because you have such a beefy vendor list you're gonna say hey it's brooke at kw i'm calling because i remembered when we sold you the house when we got you the house it has an irrigation system will you be winterizing it yourself or do you need a list of people who do that because come december 5th if they have not winterized and that first freeze happens and all those pipes break they're going to be stuck with a messy, expensive problem. You have no cheeseburger experience. But that's McDonald's now, right? This is yucky. This is like three greasy french fries in the bottom of the Happy Meal and a crappy burger. Now, by having those tags and having that vendor list and knowing your community, you can say anyone who has a sprinkler system or wants their home in New England winterized, I have worked with XYZ Landscaping and they're willing to come out and give you a quote and any of my clients get discounts with this code, right? And then you can also work with those landscapers, do a quick video on how to best winterize your home. What are the five things you should look at? Because most of the time people are going to go, I don't want to do those things. I want somebody to do those things. Cheeseburger experience. Right, guys, what's going to make people come back to you over and over and over? The Disney experience is often spoken about. I would rather not be at Disney. I have older kids. I've lived Disney my entire life with children, and now we have a five-year-old, so we're going through it again. Disney experience is not for me. I'm a cheeseburger type of experience girl, right? I am food motivated, we know. So I want to go to the best restaurant and have that experience over and over without children. And have a you're night. going for the turkey leg. Oh, what'd you say? Tell the truth, you're going to the turkey leg. I'm going, that's the only the thing turkey I eat. Leg. 
turkey legs and sangria at Epcot. Like, it's life. But that's not my Shangri-La, right? So I'm looking to give you guys the ability to build a better cheeseburger and have that experience for your clients. Because if you're struggling to get people to open emails, respond to mailers, or social media posts, I'm going to ask you this. Is it valuable to your community or is it just what you think you're supposed to be doing with real estate? Do we have to put those things out? Absolutely. Do we have to talk about real estate and educate? Absolutely. But I'm going to ask you to get a little barf bag, put it next to you. And when you want to post about real estate, look at the bag and say, when was the last time I put something about, about community? When was the last time I put something out that was personal? Maybe not too personal. Let's be careful about that, folks, okay? No religion, no politics. When was the last time I put something out about me and my community? When was the last time I talked about the community? When was the last time I talked about charity, about education, about local events? Then we bring real estate in because we've got to stop barfing real estate 24 seven, because that does not bring value to everyone. I do not love getting that just sold email because I'm like, how many realtors do I have on my list who constantly email me all their stuff? And I love seeing it, I do. But we need to start bringing value and those experiences will happen and referrals will go through the roof. Because now you have permission to say, I am so glad, Sandra, that you enjoyed that experience. Who else do you know who would enjoy that experience? I'd love to reach out to them. It's going to change your world, friends. It's going to change your world. All right. Any questions about that or ahas? You don't have a single aha. I'm going to end this. I have an unrelated question, but I'll wait till the end because it's not really um, in your cheeseburger uh, metaphor. Okay. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate it. All right. I, I, I definitely have ahas. You saw me getting excited on camera. So uh, <laughs> I never thought to put together gift baskets for first responders. I have so much respect for all of those people. And it was like, you blew my mind. It's like, why the hell haven't I done this? So that was a huge aha, which leads me into thinking like, okay, what other groups do I have a lot of respect for that I could also drop gift back baskets into? So, so aha is an understatement uh, in that respect. Um, right, I and most people go to where they have the most, right? I'm telling you to go to where you have the least yeah and work with your mortgage partners and your partners in your office because most of your mortgage companies have nurse or nurse programs doctor programs first responder educator there's all kinds of programs that they have that they can give you co-branded collateral on i know rms does i know movement mortgage does talk to the title companies talk to the mortgage lenders they have this information for you so that leads me into my second aha I've been collecting information um, uh, from vendors, you know, like, oh, I'm just building like a list of, uh, you know, recommended uh, vendors, uh, you know, I'll recommend you, you recommend me, but I never thought to go one step further and go, oh, I'm putting together a letter, do you want to include a letter, do you want to include a discount, so that was a second aha for me. Good, and I love it, that welcome home is everything. And that magnet that goes up on the fridge, it's just not my husband's doofy face, right? It's a list of local places they're going to call or go to. Muriel. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello. I, I want to say that this has been mind opening for me. I do social media, but I've never like thought about it from that standpoint, like looking at Facebook pages, seeing what folks are doing. I respond on a little bit. Mm -hmm. I try not to do a lot of um, real estate, but um, I think I think I'm going to work more at it, and I'm going to build a better cheeseburger. Build that experience, right? Why should they come back to Muriel's Real Estate? Because you provide so much value. You're fun. People want to do business with you because they like you, right? Not because we we barf real estate on people. 
I'm telling you, I'm going to send you all barf bags one day with the little logo on it. And every time you think about posting real estate, you first think, how is this bringing value? Right. Yes. Because we do. We do have to post about real estate and we should. And when you start to bring value in other ways, all of a sudden now, those real estate posts don't feel so generic. They don't feel mm -hmm. so real estate and boring sometimes because our world sometimes can be a little boring. Right. Brenda. Thank you, Muriel. You're welcome. So um, I have two things. So I made a Facebook page for my real estate separate than my personal mm -hmm. one. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I started to put up vendors that, that are friends of mine that have like a variety of stuff. Like, so this was, I don't know if you can see this, but it says Keller Williams asked me about real estate. Love it. And on the back, he's got my name and it's just a, a tumbler, but it's an etching thing. Nice. So I had that at work and I had probably 10 people talk to me because of that. Um, and in response, I put his stuff and his contact information on my real estate page going, you know, Christmas is coming, you know, teachers like, you know, you like to get your kids teachers presents, you know, how about an etched cup or, yep. you know, even other, cause I have a lot of real estate people on my real estate page. I'm like, this is like a homeowner's thing too. Like you could put yeah. this in a gift basket with their name on it or, you know, anything. So I found that, um, the vendors are really, uh, good resources cause it does, it does come back to you. And don't forget guys, out. use smart plans on them as well. Do quarterly touches with your vendors. Remember their birthdays. Remember their anniversaries, their big events. And when somebody refers someone to you, make the call and then follow up with them to make sure that they had a good experience with your client and that your client had a good experience with them as well. Bob. So uh, the subject is, is vendors. Uh, that was an interesting part for me. And uh, um, I use the vendor list. I, I have to be mostly in the, in the services area People want plumbers, carpenter, electrician. Um, I'm known just because I've been around as a go-to person for those things, not for restaurants. I never share my restaurants. Because you don't want them to take your table. Right. I know, That's I'm right. on to you. So I, I am, and so some time back, I, um, you know, we created a we created a yellow pages because when people are looking for something, I will, you know, put out the list, and it was a pretty static list. And what was yeah, how was. And, and I haven't updated it recently. And if I said uh, how many on it, there's probably, there's probably 50, 50 names and it has names, uh, it's lawyers, it's plumbers, all of that. What was interesting is we were sitting here, I just went into command. I use command. I, I live with command. Command is my, is my database. I use it. Bob, Bob, and I like you. You don't, you don't have to do this. I like you. You don't have to. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying, I'm trying to impress you. Yeah, no, no. So I'll just tell you what I, and so I do use it. And so I went into commanders was sitting here and, and I just, I just searched on the tag call vendors and I find I got 300, 300 or so vendors in there. And the aha was, and I haven't gone back through now. I have to go through and tag them and, you know, group them. But the aha was I've been working off the static list, um, very small. And my go-to list is much larger. Um, but I need to figure out what to do and how to do it is to make it dynamic. So I'm not taking all these vendors, exporting them into some kind of a PDF. I figure out how I can, when people call, I can go, go here. And this is it. So I got to figure out how to. You just search. You integrate. just search. Just add a second tag. So if you've already got vendors. Add the second tag. Attorney. Plumber. Oh, I, no, I, right. I've done that. I'm just oh, saying, perfect. how do I put it on automatic pilot when people call, I don't want to have to, when people call, say I'm looking for someone, um, I guess it's one way to get a touch. It um, is great. Yeah, you know I, what? Yeah. Let me sit down for five minutes, pull those people out of my database. Cause as you know, I have a lot of people that yeah. I know, yeah. are, is there a specific thing yeah. you're looking for timing? Let me give you three people. Can I have five minutes and I'll get back to you. I only have your home number. Is this your cell? Gotcha. You know, like, all yep. these things. It's just another way to do a touch. Um, okay. Good idea. That's, that's a great. That's a great idea. So the aha is getting much more out of my, out of my view of my vendor list. And it's funny because we own a business, right? 
we are bombarded by other businesses daily asking for business in ways for sure. that may be a little unique, but oftentimes here we are going, who do you know who'd like to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, right? But we've brought no value to the table. The yeah. cheeseburger sucks. There is no lettuce. There's no pickle, tomato, avocado, special sauce. We are just bringing this little weenie burger to the table. And then we're asking them to give us a five-star review on a half-star burger. Right? So now we're going to build those layers of the cheeseburger. We're going to bring in vendors because they're your secret sauce. They really are. Don't discount this B2B relationship. And everybody's always really worried about having the best mortgage lender that's gonna refer back. I'm gonna tell you, no, they're important. They are so important, but they're not your number one. Neither are your title people, neither, neither are the insurance people because you only use those people once, twice a year. The people who your database is gonna value continually are the people who are in your everyday lives. These eyebrows would take over my entire forehead if I didn't have an amazing eyebrow lady in Wilmington. As a woman, that is important to me. I put that stuff out in the welcome packet. I put the best barber in town. I put um, the best pedicure place, the best nail place, the best parks, um, the best paint things for kids. Like I put out things that are so important to me that I think my community is going to value. So that way, they're not just saying broken out and make this the best, smoothest transaction to buy or sell a house. They're saying Adam and Brooke care and value me before the purchase or the sale of the home. They care about making sure I'm part of the community and that I know where to go and I have a resource for everything I need when it comes to all things related to where I live and the home I do it in. And that's the value of a big juicy cheeseburger in our world. Okay, so we're going to get cheeseburgers. Aren't you glad you came to my weirdly titled class today? <laughs> Isn't it fun? All right, so in the last couple of minutes, we've got some command questions that have popped up. Who was it? Frank, my old buddy Frank, Andover Frank. Frank, come in, Frank. Frank left. He's going to build the cheeseburger. Any questions on where How to find? How about now? Oh, hi, Frank. Okay, my my plug, um, unplug. Um, okay, it's off topic. Okay. Over a year ago, um, I was talking to a looking for a financial planner, mm -hmm. and uh, and this will tie back to real estate. And in talking to him, I decided not to go with him, but you know, he was, he had his scripts just like we had ours. And I was telling him about myself and he happened to mention that he and his wife were in a townhouse and they were thinking of moving. So I immediately went in there in the South shore, uh, Braintree. So I, I immediately went into real estate mode. And I told him I was a real realtor and said, when are you getting ready to move? Well, probably not till the spring, which was last spring. And I put him in my database and I asked him where he was thinking of move, where they were thinking of moving. And they really didn't know. So I created a, uh, put him on a, on a uh, uh, plan. And basically I had neighborhoods pretty much covering the 128 corridor from Newton down to Braintree. And I said, this is too much, but let me see how it works. So I got him on there. And my first disappointment was he never got back to me. I think he thanked, I got one thank you. And I was never able to find in command when he got that email and okay what he was getting. And then I just dropped it and forgot about it. Well, I had uh, occasion this afternoon to call a related company for financial planning and elder care and stuff. And they referred me, they transferred me over to another department and they said, oh, is this, I told them what I wanted. And they said, oh, is this Frank Ford? So they've got this, they've got their CRM too. Oh. And they said, hang on. And they transferred me to that same guy. I must be on his list. 
And when he got on the phone, he introduced himself and said, can I, he says, I think we've spoken before. And I said, and I, but this is over a year ago now. And he said, I think we've spoken before. And I said, oh yeah. I said, so did you and your wife ever move? Now you understand, I'm calling for a service. They are, um, he's giving me, his, he's doing his thing. And when I found out who he was, I immediately turned it around and started doing my thing. Found out where they want to move. We talked about the market and all that stuff, why they haven't moved. And I said, well, it's changing. Yeah, you know, the prices were crazy before, but you may have been smart to wait and blah, blah, blah. You, you, know, the, you know the drill. Mm-hmm. And um, I said, so have you narrowed down where you want to move? And he did. Now I'm going to put him on it. I said, well, I'll get back to you, do some research, and I'll get back to you probably by Friday or Monday the latest. I want to put him on a campaign. Yep. But you understand the concerns I had before. I want to be able to monitor yes. so what I'm possible. sending, what people are getting. Yeah. And so here's what I'm going to tell you, and I tell everybody in every class that they sit with me in. You are doing yourself a disservice if you are not in your own command with all of your personal info. You are the only contact that you should know 100% of everything about you. You're, you are the first contact. If you don't have 100% on anyone, that should be at 100%. Use your personal email, not your KW email, and put yourself on every smart plan so you know what it looks like before your clients get it. Okay. So let me show you a couple. I have, I have one comment on that. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I had neighborhoods from Newton to Braintree. Yep. It was and too if I have other, if it was too much, but I mean, that's where he said he wanted me to look. So I wanted to cover everything. Yep. If I do that for everybody in my database, is that too much information for me that I won't be able to keep track of it? Is there a way I can narrow it down and say, you know, yes. I really want to cultivate this person. It might he might not move until next spring. Yes. But I want to keep you know stay top of mind with him. Is yes. there a way to cut? Because I thought about putting myself yes. in, and I said that could be overwhelming. Yes. Okay. You're barfing real estate. And right. You're not letting your consumer. You're so the first thing we would want to make sure we're doing too is are we validating their needs and do we understand what his wants desires are and what is the emotional part of the move. So if you're putting neighborhoods in here and you are plastering them, you're overloading them. Right. That's what I thought. Three to five. And then, Frankie, let them be curious. Because when you put them on the neighborhood smart plan, so you're going to use the biweekly, what's going to happen is when they get this email from you biweekly, and they're going to get curious. Trust me, people love to tell you when something is wrong or they don't understand something. So what they're going to get is this neighborhood nurture and it's going to say, hey, it's Frank. Here's what's going on in the neighborhoods you're looking in. What this is going to give you is it's going to start to show you a pattern of the property. So I would say to Mr. Financial Planner, I'm going to start sending you a biweekly email and there's going to be it's going to have the information on properties in the neighborhoods you may be interested in. What's important for me is that when you see something you like, you go ahead and hit the heart button, or if it is not in your world at all, go ahead and hit the hide button. What that's gonna do is it's going to make it smarter and start showing you properties that may be more in line with what you're looking to move to. Also, it allows them to start getting curious about neighborhoods. They can draw areas. Maybe they want to be right on the water. Maybe they want to be nowhere near the water, right? So they're able to start picking and choosing areas, right? They can change to street view. They can look at things very differently. So let's draw over here, okay? Now, in this very specific area, They can start filtering. So they're going from a townhouse. Do they want to go to another townhouse? Maybe they're looking at two beds, two baths. And here's the wonderful thing. They're going to say. We had that discussion also. Yep. But maybe they're going to say, we don't want to be more than 500,000. Great. Ooh, look at this. Ooh, let's not look at this. Right? You know, whatever they want. So now when I come back to command, there's two ways I'm going to see this. I like to keep my database sorted by recently active, okay? This might not catch its breath right away, okay? 
So now I did. So two minutes ago, I can see that somebody was active from my smart plan because they were clicking and liking those things and hiding things. So when I go look at this person, I can see they viewed a neighborhood. I can see they favorited a listing. Okay, so now I can click on that. I can get the information and I can start seeing patterns, right? If they're always looking at houses that are in 389 to 400, you know their budget. They're always looking at two bed, two baths. You know what they're looking for. They're always in the same area. You see what they're doing. But if you're overloading them with too many neighborhoods, you're not giving them the chance to be curious about right. real estate. Like even this, so this is just, a, you know, I use my poor husband's profile for training all the time. Three to five neighborhoods. And then I like to put something so outlandish that they'd be like, why am I looking at Las Vegas? Right? Why am I looking at North Carolina? Um, but during discussions, if they said someday they have a dream of living on the water, I'll find a, be a beautiful ocean community and put a neighborhood there so they can start poking around and looking at vacation homes. So it's let them be curious. Okay. The other question is when I went back, because I went back to his profile and mm -hmm. I, I went through the neighborhoods that I had him on and I tried to eliminate some of them, like the ones up in Newton. Yep. And some of them, they had like, you know, he mentioned the town. I go to that town and there's, you can't put the town there. You have to put the individual neighborhoods. And, well, then, when I, and then when I went back to eliminate some of the neighborhoods they put over a year ago, I'm seeing things like Grove Street and Reservoir, and I'm going, where's Grove Street? Where's Reservoir? And there was no way for me to find that. So or maybe I didn't know how to find that. Yep, so when you go find on map, so let's go to my old hometown, 03110. Okay, so um, I'm going to go to Bedford, New Hampshire. That's where I grew up, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start looking around Bedford, knowing the areas, because as a hyper-local agent, we know the areas. And I'm going to zoom in at least three times. And I know I'm going to stay, I'm going to go do Highland Farms, right? And I'm just going to give three. And then I'm going to click Save. Because this is just a starting point. These are neighborhoods that other realtors have drawn or based on uh, next door data. So what I want them to do is get curious, right? I want them to click on those links and start filtering and start looking in different areas to give me the data. I'm not preloading them with data. I'm just giving them the diving board to jump in and get curious because that's where the value is using these smart plans. Okay. I got to play with it. Yep. Play with it. Um, I love being able to see who's interacting by that, how I sort it. So recently active is stuff your clients are doing from smart plans, the, your website or your app. Recently contacted is from stuff you're doing. So you're adding your phone calls, you're adding your text message, you're adding your quick meetings or an email went. So that's when you are communicating with them. There is a big difference between the two. So if you're sending a whole bunch of stuff and nobody's communicating with it and nobody's recently active, again, ask, am I sending touches that are valuable that are gonna make people want to open the stuff that I'm sending? Do I have a cheeseburger they want? Okay, so the only way for me to monitor who's getting what is to include me on all those plans. Nope, so you just send it out from command. You just put them on a neighborhood at three to five and send it out. And then how do I find out what they got? It should, that you put yourself on a neighborhood nurture. Everybody's is gonna look on different. The spot. So even one, so no, each different one, I, so each different one I have, I put them on that. I have to put myself on each different one because I no, mean, I'm you're no, hold on. I get what you're saying. Her, look in his contacts. Yeah. So you want to know what they're getting, right? It's right in front of you on their contact. So okay. hold on. Let me get back in. Let and when they it. get it. Well, you're going to know when they get it because the smart plan tells you. Okay. So you're going to know the neighborhoods they're getting. Right. Right here. 
So okay. if you want to see it, so I showed you guys copy link. So when you copy a link, any touch that happens is going to get logged. So if you just want to see what they're going to see, click preview and it shows oh, okay. you what shows up. So they'll have okay. a little email with all the little maps and then you can see. If you want to see what the email looks like, that's why I say go ahead and put yourself on those smart plans so you can see what the actual email itself looks like. Okay. But no, um, you can see those right here. And if you click preview, it doesn't put touches here because people sometimes get excited because they they copy this link and then they're looking and doing things. That command thinks it's your client doing something. Okay. Uh, and the other thing is, see where it says Highland Farms? Now, you know that that's in Bedford. But if yes. I pick neighborhoods from a wide area, how do I find out where Highland Farms is? Click on it. You've added it, right? So right. you've added it for some reason. But if your client adds it, you just go look at that preview. Okay. Yep. Got and then, okay. So then you can also see over here, subscribe to Highland Farms. If you click on that, it brings you to the snapshot as well. Okay. So then you can get curious there. Okay, I will, um, and I got, a, I got another question I'm going to email you on about importing and exporting um, from Excel into the database. I've, re I've seen how it's supposed to work. It doesn't, and my, my big question is, I'm using Excel 2007. Is that the problem? Nope, the, the problem is probably how you're putting the data in. The other thing is if you're using an old spreadsheet, it won't work. You always have to grab the most recent. Well, what I've done is I've exported my command database mm -hmm. into Excel and then tried to import that file back into database without doing anything to the spreadsheet. You can't. It's already in there. You can't do that. It already sees it as a phone number and email. There is no overwrite. There's no merge and duplicate. So it's not going to see your data. You would have to wipe everything out, which I don't recommend because of how long you've been doing this now with me. So if you're look are you looking to do cleanup is that why yeah because when i was playing with this i was putting in a lot of um you know bogus uh names uh just to test to see how it works like i put in Herr ludwig van beethoven to see how it deals delete with them as you come across them doing legion right. delete them Archive but i said them. but my because my main database is in excel and i'm looking how to import this into command sure are you still with andover yes i sure am Awesome. So your MCTT in-house there is Ashley. Right. So I would sit with her and say, can you help me wipe out, make sure everything is out. You can wipe out your database and then clean up that Excel sheet. And then she can help you use the import. So I would make an appointment with Ashley. Okay. And then j just a general question. Do you recommend, um, cause this is one of the things that I think is a problem with command. Do you recommend putting um, salutations like Mr., Mrs., Ms., Senor, Senora in there, or it do you depends. just? It all depends. Does you know, like, does my husband always want to be called Junior? Right. Well, I'm I talking about the Miss. I'm talking about the Mr., Mrs. stuff or Ms. Uh, that, that only goes on. It doesn't go out to anyone unless you're using um, the mail feature. Okay, I'll talk to Ashley. Yeah. Okay. So, Nice to talk to you, Frank. I haven't seen you in ages. Well, yeah, well guys. come down once in a while. You coming down for Oktoberfest? I might be. I like oh. and beer. You know how okay. I feel about food. Well, my request, my request was um, that we have pretzels, and I suggested they buy plastic official. Well, you can't get official Oktoberfest mugs because I'll they're forty-eight ounces. Hosen. Yeah. I'll bring my liter hose in, and I'll be at Oktoberfest. All right. And by guys. the way, the best the best uh, cheeseburgers are the ones I make because I make them like I make my meatballs and just grill them or fry them. So That's you don't need idea. toppings because it's all in That's the meat. That's the best part. No way. I love my toppings. All right, guys. Bye. You have homework. Go build a better cheeseburger. Bye. Bye. Grab those people out of those lists. I'll pop. It's in the chat. Go ahead. Get them. Get out there, build a better cheeseburger, bring some value, stop barfing real estate, and we'll see you next Thursday. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.